You're listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of ABK Media Group, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County every day at 9 a.m. Southern living at its best. Hey, 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 good morning, good morning. Welcome to Good Morning Gwinnett. I'm your host, Audrey Bell Kearney. Happy hump day, everybody. Today is, is the day is Wednesday, so you're in the middle. You know, it's, it's, let me tell you something. Time flies. Do you hear me? Time does not wait for anyone. It flies. Today is already Wednesday. Whew, I feel like I feel like I just got started. Hope you're having a great day so far. I am. It's pretty nice here today as well. You know, I um. I love getting up in the morning. It's just a beautiful day. It's not too hot. It was a little warm yesterday. Um, it got up to about 89 degrees, and so that was a little bit warm, but not too bad. Right now, 73 is going to be going up to a high of 91, and so we're still going to have a very nice day. But it wasn't too bad. You know, it was too bad. So listen, we're going to start off with our horoscope to for today, brought to us by astrologer Mike Thyson. He gives us our daily horoscopes, and we're going to kick it off today, May 22nd. Um, we're going to kick it off with Aries. Real estate investments could be your advantage. to your advantage. Unexpected bills will be impossible for you to pay. Hassles with your boss are sure to erupt if you speak your mind. All right, be careful now. Speak your mind, but don't lose your job, Aries. Taurus, go out shopping today. Oh, boy. Lending and borrowing may be a problem. Look into some personal changes. Go out shopping, Taurus, but don't overdo it because, you know, we can go overdo it, especially women. Women can overdo it. Gemini, travel may be confusing. Your main concern will be to spend as little as possible of your own cash in the process. Pleasure trips will bring you into contact with new and interesting people. Okay. You're going to meet some new people today, Gemini. That's cool. It's always nice to meet new people, especially nice new people. Okay, Cancer, there are ways of making extra cash if you put your mind to it. Dealing with foreigners will be most enlightening. This is not the time to lend or borrow money or possession. Don't lend your money. Don't borrow any money, Cancer. Stay cool. Ride out this uh, storm that you're going through. It's going to be okay. All right, and then find some foreigners to get around because it could be most enlightening. Leo, don't let others saddle you with guilt that isn't warranted. If you're single, get out there and you'll meet someone new. You may want to make changes that will not be to your liking, to their liking. All right, go on out there and meet somebody new, Leo. If you're single, singles, get out there and mingle. If you're single and you need to mingle to meet somebody. Virgo, socializing or travel will lead to partnerships. Business trips will be more productive than than trying to fight the red tape facing you. Um, it may not be the best time to socialize with clients or colleagues. Be careful who you hang out with today, Libra. Don't, you know, sometimes we can hang out with our, our colleagues and our, and so, and our workers, co-workers. And, you know, you don't want them to see things you do, especially when you do things that are kind of not, not cool. So listen, we're going to a song. I'll be right back after this next song to continue to bring you our daily horoscopes brought to us by astrologer Michael Thyerson. Be right back. Like a cargo, you will carry me. I just hope you know my depth, even though it makes no sense. Sun is unbroken, too much to 
I'm your host, Audrey Bell Kern, giving you the horoscope for today, brought to you by Michael Thyssen, astrologer Michael Thyssen. We're going to pick it up with Libra. Libra, you may find yourself a bit frazzled if you allow someone to gall you into an unsavory debate. Your home environment may be volatile if precautions aren't taken. Children needs to needs could be more costly than anticipated. Oh my goodness. Those little, those little boogers, we, you know, we, we love them to death, but you know, they could, they cost us some money. I ain't gonna lie. Scorpio, unfortunately, your personal life may suffer, suffer from lack of spare time. Mm, you gotta make some time for love, Scorpio. Um, control your temper by getting immersed in your work. Now, listen, if, she, if Scorpio already doesn't have time for love, now you want to get more immersed into work. I don't know. You got to figure out some balance there, Scorpio. Your involvement in groups would be favorable for meeting new and exciting individuals. Sagittarius, problems with relatives and friends could surface. Emotionally, things may not run so smoothly. Consider making pleasure trips or participating in entertainment that will require your energy. All right. Try to, try to get over the hump, especially when it comes to friends and relatives. All right. Capricorn, avoid getting too close to co-workers or employers. Pleasure trips, oh, there's a lot of traveling going on here. Pleasure trips will induce exciting and passionate encounters with those of foreign extraction. Stay mellow. Ooh, stay mellow, Capricorn. Be easy now, be easy. Aquarius, some situations may be blown out of proportion. Avoid lending money or belongings to friends. Your boss may not be in the best of moods today, so stay away. That's me saying that part. If your boss is in a bad mood, I'm sure you probably done checked it out. Stay away from them. My fellow fish, Pisces, friendships may be ruined if you let too many people get involved in any disputes. Do things that involve children. Try to get everyone involved. It will help bring you closer together. All right, those are our daily horoscopes brought to us by our resident astrologer, Michael Thyssen. I will be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. to bring you more. But on to more news about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. Well, I'm sorry to say a couple of weeks ago, I had to report that Ingalls, one of my favorite grocery stores right here in Lawrenceville, closed down now i gotta say one of my other favorite stores is closing now dress barn i like dress barn what the heck is going on i like dress barn it's a it's a dress barn right in snellville and whenever i'm looking to find something a little bit different but in a good price range i go to dress barn i always go to dress barn i used to go to 
the avenue a lot. And then I um then I used to go to Lane Bryant, but I found that Lane Bryant just became ridiculously expensive. So I started going to Dress Barn because it's kind of in the middle. I like Dress Barn. Now Dress Barn is closing. I am so upset about that. First they closed my angles. Now they're closing Dress Barn. I mean, here's the crazy part. Where am I going to shop at? They keep closing stores like this. We're going to have to buy everything online, which now if it doesn't fit, you got to send it back. That's a hassle. I don't like that. But anyway, let's get on with the story. So the retail industry suffered another blow after Dress Barn's parent company announced it is shutting down the clothing chain's operation. Oh, my God. You know, um, they're closing down more than 650 Dress Barn stores. But they remain they will remain open for now. Um, but they're going to keep open and tell and loft. And, and, and I think they own Lane, Lane Bryant's too. The shutting down of Dress Barn, which opened its first store in 1962, doesn't come as a shock to industry experts. While the closure of Dress Barn was not inevitable, given the company's dire performance, it comes as little surprise that the president has decided to head for the exit. Wow, that is terrible. Wow. So, um... It's another sign of hard times for U.S. retailers and, you know, as stores close across the country in 2019 alone. And remember, we're still in the first half of 2019. We're still in the first. We didn't even get we're not even in June yet. So in 2019 alone, U.S. retailers said that 5,994 stores will close. That is a lot. Listen, that is a lot of stores closing. And so, you know, you got to think about this, too. One, they're going to be closing, so there's going to be a a a a hole in in certain communities for certain stores. Two, there's a lot of people that's going to be displaced from jobs. So we we you know we got a good unemployment rate going right now, but with this many stores closing, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of. Just think about this. An average store probably probably hire about let's say let's say five people on average, right? That's twenty six thousand jobs that are going to be lost. 26 that's a lot of people that are out out of work so i mean it has been so so the, the industry the, the industry has played it's been plagued by by closures and failures bankruptcies have plagued the retail brands including payless jimboree charlotte Ruse, and sears which has been open for a freaking century filed bankruptcy last october man that is rough so oh Gonna be sad to see my store go because I really like them. I just gave away, um, I just sold, I did a closet sale on Saturday because I have a lot of clothes. Um, and uh, I lost a lot of weight, so I can't fit any of them. But one of the things that I had was this pink jacket that I bought from Dress Barn. And, and, I, and I bought that jacket. I, I was going to an event. I had to be a speaker. And I was like, I need something colorful to um, to wear. And I ran in dress barn and I got that jacket. It was actually on sale. It was a pink one and a yellow one. I had to decide between which one and pink. I look good in pink. You know, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I look good in pink and I look good in yellow. But for some reason I had to pick the pink and I really liked that. So it was really hard giving up that particular jacket because I was like, man, I really like this jacket, but I can't fit it. And I got that out of dress barns and I'm like, "Mm, I'm sad to see it go. But anyway, what can I do? All right, so apparently the uh, Gwinnett commissioners recently voted to approve a million-dollar contract for Gwinnett Board of Registration and Election Renovation Project. So they're going to be locate, they're going to be renovating the um, the uh, uh, voters registration voters registration office here in Lawrence. They're located at 455 Grayson Highway. Um, the plans include interior re- renovation of the voter registration and election office, an exterior facade upgrade, parking lot resurfacing, and reconfiguration. It does look old and dingy. Um, it does. So that's gonna be that's gonna be nice to see the up the uh, the uh, renovations done on that on that particular property. The county received five bids and have awarded the contract to the lowest responsive bidder, and that was Lech- Leachy Commercial Construction Inc. So Leachy is going to be doing an overhaul on the voters registration office located in Gwinnett right here at 455 Grayson Highway. So we're going to see a new look, uh, which is cool. I mean, people like to go to work when something looks nice. So you got you to gotta be okay with that. All right, moving right along. Moving right along. We got a lot of a lot of news for you today. So apparently um, there was a study done recently um, to see the see how many people actually live in extended stay. And, there, and there, it was a it was a 
it was it was it was a it was shocking to say the least. Um, close to one tenth of the people who live in Norcross are estimated to live in one of the fourteen extended stay motels there. Um, the report was released on Tuesday night by a group looking into homelessness in the city. So Live Norcross spent recent months looking into the city's extended state motel population to study the challenges that exist to affordable housing in Norcross. Live Norcross was established a year and a half ago through partnership with the state to address issues facing the city's homeless population. Man, they found that one tenth of the people living in these extended state population, um, extended state motels, um, are in Norcross. Here's the other. Here's the other staggering number that, you know, was staggering for me. According to the breakdown, <clears throat> according to the breakdown of the people living in these motels, 70% of them are African Americans, 22% are white, 4% are Hispanic, and 1.3% are Asian. That was staggering. 70% of them are African Americans. Wow. Okay, so that's a lot, you know. Women who are the heads of their household make up forty percent, forty five percent of the extended state motel households. So, you know, a lot of times we think that people that are there are people that are living there on on because they're there on business trips and they, they you know they have like, you know, um extended stays over because of business and that's not the case. Um twenty nine percent of the people who live in extended state motels are elderly. Another shocking um revelation. 21% of the residents who live receive social security or disability payment. <clears throat> That's another shocking. So what does this tell us? This tells us that there's a need for affordable housing in, in, in Gwinnett County. There's a need for that. And so, you know, to address this, we have to figure out how, what we need to do to do that, you know, to, 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 to pick up the slack there and to help these people so they don't have to live in an extended state. When we moved down to Georgia, we came down and we knew we were going to be here about a week looking for a place to live. So we stayed at, um, the extended state in Duluth, I think it was, it was nice. It was nice. But when I tell you it was like a room with a stove and a refrigerator, it wasn't like something I would want to live in all the time. So, you know, just to think about that, put that in perspective for you, you got families that are living in these extended stays. I'm talking about more than one person. It was just my husband and I, and we knew we were going to be here for a week, and we know we didn't want to keep eating out every day because he likes to cook. And so we said, you know what, let's find somewhere that has a stove, and, and we, we stayed in an extended stay. And it was a pretty decent one. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't big either. It was small, you know. So you think about families who are living in um these extended stay motels, two, three, four people, that's a lot in a cramped little space. So we have to do something about that. You know, um, last year I was, you know, I'm a, I'm a geek. I'm a, I'm a geek by nature. I like technology. I like things that are different. And I was reading an article. I had seen this uh, thing on Cheddar. Cheddar always had like these really, so if you don't know what Cheddar is, Cheddar is like a news organization, but on LinkedIn, they always have these really nice videos where they find these amazing inventions and things. So they post these little mini videos about those things. So I like Cheddar. And so I was on LinkedIn and I saw a a video about a, um, a 3D printer that print houses, right? So I was instantly intrigued like instantly I was intrigued instantly about that and so I called the company and I was like you know I want to know how can I what do I need to do to bring this to the state of Georgia where I knew that there was a uh, need for affordable housing so I spoke to the manufacturer of the equipment that actually does the 3d printing and he told me what I needed to do and um that's something that's on my agenda to get to. It's a little bit expensive. No, no, it's not a little. It's a lot expensive. It's a lot expensive. But the other thing, too, is, you know, we have to be ready to um, we have to be ready for affordable housing that is 3D printed. So when I say 3D printed, this this giant machine, it has um, it, it has you loaded up with concrete and the concrete is actually layered out by the machine until the house is built. Now, here's the thing about that. The house will be built in a day. Right. It's a concrete house that will be built in a day and it will build rooms in the house. Right. I mean, it was amazing. So I'm looking at the video and I'm like, man, this is crazy. So it, the, 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 you put the you load the machine with concrete and then you put you put in a picture through the computer of what the house is supposed to look like. And then the machine layers the concrete. They call it 3D printing because it actually is like 3D printing. Because think about when you put something 
when you print something out on a on a piece of paper, you put it, it's on the screen, you see it, you hit print and it prints out on a paper. Well, this actually prints out in a structure and the house is printed and you can have rooms. I think the house that I saw had five rooms in it. I'm talking about that was five room, a five room house. And so there were some other little changes that you had to go in and make to the house. But I thought it was amazing that in one day that house could be built because it was 3D printed. We could do something like that here. You know, but what's going to have to happen is that they're going to have to relax some of the regulations about how the structure is built. Now, the company that I I talked to said that structure will last for 100 years. That's a long time. They said the structure will last for 100 years without, you know, anything happening to it. You know, and there's some other things that have to go into it. But listen to this, y'all. If it costs us $50,000 to build a house in a day. Don't you think that would address the homelessness problem? Not just in Gwinnett County, not just in the state of Georgia, not just in the United States. That will address the problem around the world. If you could print a house in a day, right? And you get everything in there. You get the insulation in there. You get the piping and the plumbing in there. Let's say that takes you, let's say that takes three weeks, four weeks, a month, right? You just completed an entire house in a month. That's a new home for a family, especially a family that's living in an extended stay motel, especially a family that's living with people because they can't afford their own. We're talking about a month for a five room house. You know, so think about that. Technology is a monster. You know, it is changing the way we do a lot of things. I'm going to a song. I'll be right back to bring you more information about what's going on because I, you know, I feel like we have to get involved with that. We have to stand up and say, you know what, what can we do? And I said that, I said, what can I do? And when I, when I saw that 3d printer, I was like, we could do this. So I'm going to continue my research into that and find out more about what that entails and, um, see how we can possibly bring something. They have a, they have a whole city. I want to say in Texas, I think it's called solar city, but it is like the whole community is built with, uh, made of 3d printed houses. It's, it's amazing you know solar energy and you know renewable energy all these things that we can do we need to get doing so i'll be right back after this song to bring you more about what's going on in and around gwinnett county you listen to good morning gwinnett i'm your host audrey bell kearney What's going on? Simple truth, I don't know. Let's get it on. Touching the stars, touching the stars. Dancing, 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 feel like dancing in the
Welcome back to Good Morning Gwinnett. I'm your host, Soldier Bell Kearney, giving you the daily rundown about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. So Gwinnett County has agreed to house up to 222 inmates. That is a partnership that it was formed a while ago. Gwinnett County agreed to house up to 222 inmates for one year. But the head of the county's prison said more funding will be coming to Gwinnett to help pay for that effort. The county annual renews an agreement with the the with the Georgia Department of Corrections to house the state inmates in the Gwinnett County Comprehensive Correctional Complex. The county commissioners renewed that agreement Tuesday to cover that period of July 1st of this year through June 30th of 2020. So right now they're going to get an increase for those inmates. They were regularly getting paid $20 a day per inmate. Now they're going to be getting $22 a day per inmate. That's a $2 increase. Um, since this first happened in, in 1999. So they're going to be housing the inmates, but they do get paid for it. So um, the, this there's also funding in an agreement that has been appropriated by the Bill 31, House Bill 31. And that's a, that's a per diem that's getting paid daily. So got some inmates coming here. But, you know, we do a good job to protect. Tomorrow I'm, I'm going to be doing my Gwinnett Citizens Academy. And we're going to be visiting the police academy tomorrow so i'm excited about that to go through that whole process and see how that works out um how, how they do it you know what does that until i was going to correction officer one time i don't i know i probably told this story before i know for sure i told it to commissioner nash um that i was going to be a corrections officer and so it was so funny because my friend it was like it was a bunch of us it was like one two it was about five of us we were all going to be correction officers not a five three of us became correction officers and a couple of them one has retired already and two is about to retire. So I'm dating myself a little bit, but we were young. We were like probably 20, 19, 20 years old. And we were going to become correction officers. And I remember her, I remember going through the whole entire process. And I remember going into, it was, it was a process. It took about three months. And I remember going into the, um, cause she had to get a psychiatric, a psychiatric evaluation as well. You couldn't just be a CO. And so I remember going into my psyche valve and I, and I don't know what made me just look around the room and pay attention to everything. And so the first thing the guy said, he introduced himself to me and I sat down and um, he told me to close my eyes. And I said, okay, I closed my eyes. He asked me what color tie did he have on, what was on the wall and what was the color of the carpet. And I thought that was the craziest thing. But here's the funny part. I knew all the answers. That was so crazy. So um, I went through that whole process. And then we had to do the walkthrough to the prison, right? So I go to do the walkthrough through the prison. And when I did the walkthrough, um, I don't know, it was some guy in there. He scared the daylight out of me. He's like, when you come here, I'm going to get you. And he said that to me. And I was like, yeah, I ain't going in there. So I, did, I never became a CEO because he scared the daylights out of me. And I was like, I'm not going into the system my mother kept saying but you gotta look so cute in your uniform you gotta look so cute and i was like man i don't care about no uniform i'm not going in there and and what happened i still wound up working at the prison for probably i worked at the county jail for like three months so when i got ready to get married and this was years later we talking about 20 years later i i did go to i did go to jail let me put it like that because i thought I, I felt like i was going to jail every night so when i got ready to get married I decided I wanted to have a big wedding. I was an entrepreneur and I could not have a big wedding because I had just started out being a full-time entrepreneur. So I know I could not have a big wedding because I wasn't making any money in my business. So I decided to go back to work and I went to work at the county jail. So every night at 11 o'clock, I would go to the county jail. I worked in the medical department and go to work. And one night, I noticed that this guy would always be down in the infirmary when I would come into work. And he would always be there looking through the glass. And he would be looking at me and kissing and stuff, throwing kisses. So this one particular night I went to work, he was there looking through the glass, right? So I had to come into where the glass was. So once I came into that space, I was able to, they were able to kind of like walk around, like in the space a little bit. And so my office was kind of like in the back. And I remember I was on the phone talking to my husband and all the lights went out. Now the doors inside of the county are super duper heavy. 
Those doors are so heavy till it takes them about a minute to close because they're so heavy and they close in, in slow motion. So I'm sitting there talking to my husband on the phone. And as I'm talking on the phone to him, the lights go out. And all I can remember was this guy behind this glass. And my thought was, oh my God, he's going to get me. And I jumped up from my desk. I still had the phone in my hand. And I started screaming. I said, oh my God, oh my God. He's like, what's wrong? I said, the lights went out and the door was open. And so I jumped up and I, 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 the phone was still in my hand in some kind of way. I pulled the phone and the whole desk moved because I was trying to close that door because the door takes so long to close. And I'm in the back by myself and all the light freaked me completely out. I left the job. I had a small wedding. I left the job. So I just wanted to share that story with you guys. I'm going to go to another song because that, that thing still makes me laugh because I was like, I almost broke my hip trying to close that door. And the door took like a whole minute to close and the lights were out. And the lights stayed out for about an hour. I was freaking out in the dark inside of my office. I was like, I want to go home. When those lights came on, my ship ended. I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'll be right back after this next song. I've been thinking about the good times. I've been sleeping through the long night I've been shining in the sunlight I've been thinking how I'm alright There's a reason for my feelings There's a reason why I'm healing Yeah, I feel higher than the ceiling All because of you You and I are so sweet, so sweet Talking till we asleep, asleep Every night I fall deep, fall deep But love Catch up on my reading. I should catch up on my eating. Yeah, but it's hard to keep a thought straight with you all up in my face. Try to get you on my mind, but why should I when you're all I really like? Yeah, I feel higher than a mountain, all because of you. You and I were so sweet, so sweet. Talking till we asleep, asleep. Every night I fall deep, fall deep. Audrey Bell Kearney giving you the daily rundown about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. Man, this is such a cool story. So there's an eight-year-old author from Loganville. He, he was on Steve Harvey. This little guy, let me tell you something. I've been an author for 20-something years. I haven't gotten to Steve Harvey yet. This little eight-year-old boy, his name is Nicholas, Nicholas Booma, has already been on The View. Um, they uh, Today he'll add Steve Harvey to his list of guest appearances. Oh, man, he is made... He's made while promoting his craft. So um, the young author made a trip to Los Angeles roughly two weeks ago to visit the set of the show. During the segment, Boomer demonstrated what he knows best, vocabulary. He taught the show host the meaning of words such as exasperate, um, which led to uh, promoting his book. 
Kayla and Kyle, the walking dictionaries. Oh, listen, I have a friend. I know I always got stories. I have a ton of stories because I always, I know interesting people and I, and I've done a whole lot of stuff, but I have a friend. She's an author too. She's written a children's book and, um, I help her, I help her self publish that book. She published it last year. But anyway, when we were younger, right? So we grew up in Newark. We walking down the street and I'm probably saying, I'm probably talking, I'm probably talking crazy right now. We're walking down the street and we would be walking and hanging out at school and going to places, going to parties and stuff. And we would say some stuff that was slang and she would say, she would correct us. Right. But she would do it. It was like second nature to her. Like she didn't mean anything by it. It's just that she was like a, and we used to call her the walking dictionary. And I think that's so funny. They call him the walking dictionary. Um, the walking dictionary election day in the book, walking dictionaries, Kayla and Kyle are each running for class. Pre- okay. So this little kid is eight years old and he has his characters are running for class presidents. Okay. Nice. And they hold a debate. Both dictionaries advocate for their, (laughs) advocate for their qualifications while using some occasionally advanced vocabulary in their rebuttals. That is so cool. The book, um, the picture book is Boma's first. He plans to write 19 sequels. He's eight. Listen, you should write a book. I'm going to give a class on how to self-publish your book. He's he's eight years old. He's he got 19 sequels already planned for Kayla and Cal series. Man, this is amazing. And, and let me tell you something. A lot of people don't know what exasperate is. Like, what the freak does that mean? So let's give him a hand, y'all. He's doing some amazing things at eight. Okay, that's something new that I'm just trying out. I thought that was pretty cool. I'm always, you know, I'm such a, I'm such a nerd. And I realize it now. Like it took me so many years to realize I was a nerd, but congratulations, um, Nicholas on your, on your, on your book and on your 19 sequels and on making the Steve Harvey show, man, I'm trying to get to Steve Harvey here and look, I'm, I'm going to have to go visit him. Like, listen, I need you to put me in with Steve Harvey. Like I'm going to an eight year old to help me get on Steve Harvey. That's crazy. Right. All right, there's a home buy seminar today. <clears throat> if you're thinking about buying a home, and or if you're a real estate prospect and um, you have people that are looking to buy a home, this home buyer workshop is meant for prospective home buyers, including first time home buyers, second time home buyers, and even real estate investors. Um, it is meant for anyone wishing to become educated or re educated about the mortgage process prior to embarking on home on the home search during this class attendees attendees will perform a full pre-qualifications of themselves <clears throat> excuse me while learning about the various aspects of the underwriting review topics covered will include credit report credit history rental history employment income debt to ratio asset interest rates closing costs and mortgage approval attendants will be taught how to determine their target price range based on their desired housing budget um, light refreshments will be served. This is a free event. All are welcome. All are asked to register. Um, and you can go to do that by going to, uh, you can register by going to, uh, Thomas.Hogan, Thomas.Hogan at UCBI.com. This event is brought to you today by United Bank, United Community Bank. Um, so that's, that's what, and it's going to be held today at 630. It's free. It's going to be located at 63335 Amherst Court, and that's in Peachtree Corners, offices of Olson, Ol- Ol- okay, so I, the little kid need to teach me how to read, right? Olson, Olson, and it's got an H in it, so it kind of threw me off. Okay, Olson and Metlock, um, the closing attorneys, that's they, they're hosting this workshop. Let me tell you something. If you've never been through the process of buying a home, it could be quite a a, a challenge because there's so many things that go into it buying a home so the first time I bought my first home I remember going through this process and I'm never going to forget this we we had put the contract on the house the contract had been accepted we had put down the earnest money and we were about a day or two maybe two days from closing I think it was and I'll never forget it my mom and I was out having lunch and we got a call from our um I think it was the realist. It was either our attorney or it was the 
our realtor. But anyway, we got a call and they said, listen, you guys need to go get flood insurance on the house like right now. Now, here's the thing. A red flag should have went up right when they told me that. But I didn't know. I didn't know. So it was two days from closing and I'm sitting there in a restaurant. It's like, you got to get this insurance. You got to You got to have it by tomorrow. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm pissed because why did, why is someone just not telling me like right before closing that we need to have flood insurance? And here's the other thing I should have been thinking about. Why do we need flood insurance? Right? So you need flood insurance because you're in a flood zone. I didn't think about that because I didn't know I was supposed to think about that. And so I'm pissed off now because they tell me I got to come up with another $2,500 because that's how much the flood insurance co- costs. And, um, I had to come up with another $2,500 like right now. I'm, I'm got all this money that I got to put down on the house. The house was like $356,000, you know, so you got to put down this big chunk of money for the down payment. And I'm like pissed. And so that, these are the things that happened. So I didn't even know we needed flood insurance because I went, I remember distinctly going to that house with my realtor and I should have had, I didn't pay attention because I didn't know. Right. So knowledge is power. I mean, it may sound cliche, but knowledge is power. I I remember her saying to me, Hey, listen, it rained a lot. Let's go over and take a look at the basement and make sure there's no water, right? So I'm thinking, oh, okay. So we go to the house. Now, why she said that? Because she probably knew that my house was in a freaking flood zone. And nobody disclosed that to me. And I didn't know. So we go to the house. There was no water in the basement. It looked fine. Well, how about this? We buy the house. We're so excited. About two months later, the house floods. The house, the, the, the basement complete, completely, and I still have pictures. The ba- the basement completely floods two feet of water in the basement. Two feet of water. And that happened twice. So listen, if you're thinking about buying a home, and I'm not sharing this story with you to scare you. I'm sharing this story with you for you to understand that you need to understand how this process works. Because I believe in my heart that had I known that there was a problem with flooding, I could have canceled my contract and bought another house. That house flooded twice. And the second time it flooded, it was totally destroyed because the, the power went out in the house. It stayed out for about a week. We had to boil water. It was, cr- when I tell you, it was like we were living in a third world country. It was crazy. The the this, the pipes, all kinds of things happened with that house. It was so stressful and my mortgage was so high. Like when I came to Georgia and I saw this house and I was like, I know this house. This can't be the price of this house. And the guy asked me, he said, well, what would a house like now? Remind you, remember, I said my house cost three fifty six, dollars right? My house looked, and I lived, in the, I lived in the suburbs. My house looked nothing like this house. I mean, absolutely nothing. So when I saw this house, the realtor asked me, he said, so what would a house like this go for in Jersey? I was like $750,000. He was like, what? I was like, you got to see my house. Now I had a granted for Jersey. It was a nice house, right? Because of the way Jersey is made. It was an older house like that's It was in the suburbs. So it was a nice house. It was nothing like this house. Like when you look at that house or this house, they'd be like, man, that's the house. You paid three fifty six for that house, but that is a process, and that process can be so daunting. And there's so many things you need to understand. I was a mortgage, um, I was a mortgage consultant, and I help people with mortgages. I and I stopped doing it because I would people would come to me, and they would find out all the things they need to do. We would go through this whole process, and then something would happen, and then I worked like a month or two on this on this mortgage and getting everything approved, and then it falls apart because there are just so many underlining things that you need to be aware of. You need to understand. Here's another big thing. Here's another big thing. You need to understand how much house you can really afford, right? You may think that, Hey, I want this $300,000 house, but in reality, you can only afford a $180,000 house. I know that sounds crazy, but you need to know that. And here's the thing. Remember this. When you go and get your mortgage done, it's not based on your net income. It's based on your gross income. It's not based on how much money you bring home and then think about all the money you pay out. It's based on how much money you earn. And that's not how much house you can afford most of the time. Because you earn $100,000 a year doesn't mean you can afford to purchase a house based on $100,000 a year. You need to understand that. And so I said all that to say, if you have some time tonight and you're thinking about buying a house, especially Especially if you are a first time home buyer, go on out, 
Find out all these things you need to know before you take that leap. Because listen, you can get stuck out there in so many ways. The event is free. It's tonight from 6.30 to 8 p.m. It's going to be located at 6335 Amherst Court in Peachtree Corners. Go there. Get the information. It can't hurt you, especially if you're trying to buy a house. Listen, I'm going to my last song, and I'll be right back to, to bring you, to continue to bring you the rundown about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. You listen to Good Morning Gwinnett. I'm your host, Audrey Bell Kearney. Good morning. Good morning, Gwinnett. I'm your host, Audrey Bell Kearney, giving you the daily rundown about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. Listen, if you missed an episode of the show, go on over to goodmorninggwinnett.com. Please share the show with your friends. I'm trying to grow it to a million subscribers or a million download or a combination of both. So listen, more events coming up for you right now. If you want to learn how to, if you're in the real estate, so the, the last segment I talked about, you know, first time home buyers and how to get yourself um, educated about this process. Now I'm going to be talking to those of you who are realtors. <clears throat> And those of you who are realtors or real estate or in the real estate profession and you want to learn how to have a lucrative and build an exciting business around the lifestyle and real estate, there's an event going on tonight called Chats with Jackie. Jackie has been in this industry for 15 years and she's going to be talking to you about how to build an exciting and lucrative business around your current lifestyle in real estate. The real estate industry is rapidly changing. And if you have ever considered a career in real estate, now's the time it is booming. Just just in just in, in Lawrenceville alone. I, we are building, so I was riding the other day, just riding around, because I just like to ride around sometimes and see what's going on. So downtown on Clayton Street, they're building a whole, like, condos and townhouses and homes right there in that spot right there. But I went down a little bit further, and I went down by this new, um, it's an event spot down there called Laundry. And I made a left down that street and they were building some townhouses over there. And I'm like, holy crap. So they're building everywhere. I was going to the doctor a couple of weeks ago and I was like, wait a minute, 
they weren't building right there. And that was in Swanee. So they're building all over the place. And it is an exciting time to be in real estate. Um, so if you are currently in real estate and not sure how to take your business to the next level, you can't afford to miss this event. Jackie's going to be sharing detailed information on how to build your business to create a lifestyle of your dreams. And you receive a roadmap handbook to help you navigate the, um, navigate with confidence. <clears throat> if you're in this industry, there are a lot of opportunities when my brother was looking for his home and he's been out here plenty of times, he went to a subdivision and they had, um, realtors on site. Um, that that's all they did. They just, they worked on site. Now here's the, here's the flip side to that. So, cause, cause the, the, the subdivision that he was looking at, it hit a stall. Now the houses were beautiful. He was excited. He was ready to go. And he's been trying to, he's been going through this process since last year in July. We are about to be in July again. And he never got that house. And he didn't find out until I think it was maybe, um, February that they had stopped building that particular style of house. And they were about to build some other styles that he wasn't really, you know, he didn't really like that much. But anyway, the realtor that was there, you know, we would, we went there so many times and the house was so nice. Cause everybody that came to visit, we took them to see the house. And my brother came now, he must've been to the house a hundred times. She said to me, we are at a deadlock right now because we can't start building until Georgia power releases the lots. They had to do something. So I said to her, what do you do in the meantime? Now we talking about from July, they hadn't built the house from July to probably January. I said, what are you doing in the meantime about making money? She said, we just have to wait it out. That is crazy. So even though, you know, there's a lot of opportunities, you need to weigh, weigh your pros and cons. If you, you know, if you don't like to drive around, you say, no way, I'm going to go work for a subdivision that's being built. That's great because you don't have to do anything but drive around the subdivision or walk around the subdivision. However, if that subdivision stalls and you have to go to work every day and nobody can purchase a house, there were people always, every time we went there, there were people coming in and out, in and out. They couldn't sell a house. They could not, they were at a deadlock. So they were just sitting there showing houses and couldn't sell anything. So if they're not selling houses, they're not making any money. And I said, there, do you get paid? Why you sit here every day? Like that's a waste of time. Like you could be out really like selling houses. And she was like, no, you know, we just got to wait it out. So you need to understand how all this stuff works. If you're thinking about going into real estate, and this may be a great event for you to go out and chat with Jackie tonight about that process and you know what happens and which direction should you go in should you be a commercial realtor could you should you be a residential realtor you know you need to know should you work for subdivision should you work for a company should you work for a, a mergers and acquisition companies what what where do you need to go with that whole thing because real estate can take you in a lot of different directories di- different directions so you need to know how to navigate that uh that plane this event is going to be held at Beans and Butter Coffee Cafe, Coffee House, Beans and Butter Coffee House, located at 851 Oak Road Southwest, and that's in Lawrenceville. There is a ten dollar charge for this, but you um listen, it's probably going to be worth the money, especially if you're trying to make this a career for yourself, because it could be something serious. Let me just tell you that. All right. On to something else. The Gwinnett Entertainment Meetup. All right. Listen, if you are a singer or a songwriter and you desire to be in the entertainment industry, you probably want to go out to this event tonight. Um, the keynote speaker tonight is Xavier Lewis. He's going to be talking about this whole industry. He was featured on NBC's America's Got Talent and the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So another one right here in Gwinnett that's been on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. He's You're going to find out, you know, if you're struggling and, on, and trying to figure out how to... Ma- build your career in entertainment this may be something you need to go out and check out you know you're tired of the same old boring networking events i know i i'm i am like it's so many of them the um gwinnett entertainment meetup with ian watson learn how to learn the proper techniques and strategies for success in the entertainment industry by attending this event tonight every third wednesday it's going to be at the dash digital studios right here in swanee it's a free event you know it's seven o'clock to eight o'clock is going to be networking from eight to eight forty five you're going to hear from xavier who has been on the steve harvey show too as well and then from eight forty five to nine o'clock you got a q and a session so it's free um, you can network with other people in the industry. Also learn about what's going on in the industry from experienced speakers. Um, every month you will find, you will get a new speaker. So check this out. Go and check it out. It's tonight from seven to nine. It's going to be located at Dash Digital Studio, lo- located at 1300 Peachtree Industrial Boulevard. That's suite 2105 and that's in Swanee. It's free. Seven to nine. 1300 Peachtree Industrial Boulevard, suite 2105 in Swanee. Go ahead, check it out. Make sure that you know 
um, you get your questions answered. You get your questions answered, you know, and, and, and so you can have a lucrative career. That's what we all strive for, right? We all strive for a lucrative career. If you like entertainment, then this may be the thing for you. Okay, you still have time for this workshop. It's a perfume workshop for your children. I think that's so cute. Um, there's going to be a perfume workshop for your children. Get your baby signed up uh, for spots because they're limited. Your child will be able to blend their own notes together to create their own perfume. That is so cute. They will also be able to name their own signature blend and take it home. Oh, so they get to take it home. That's nice. I, I, there's a company out there where well, it used to be a company. I don't know if they're still around. But we had a perfume party at my house one time. There was a my friend, a friend of mine, she was doing this company. She was, it was a network marketing company. I thought that was such a nice concept. You could blend your own perfumes, you know, create your own perfume, you send it off to the company that will send it back to you with your name on the bottle, the name of your scent. I thought that was really, really, cause I like perfume, but anyway, if you want your child to learn how to blend their own perfume, um, they will also be able to name their own signature blend, take it home to register your child. You would need to email, email them. It's called the Perry boutique at gmail.com. That's P E R I Y boutique.com the perry p-e-r-y p-e-r-i-y boutique at gmail.com or just give them a call 770-910-7904 770-910-7904 that's free and it's going to be t- today from 12 to 2 p.m and it's going to be located at 2559 far avenue and that's in the Cula. 2559 Far Avenue in Decula from 12 o'clock to 2 p.m. It's a free event. The workshop will be reserved and permitted for only six children. So you want to go ahead and register your child now. Um, if your child is not in the workshop, they will be reserved in the following workshops in the following week. So go ahead. Do that today. Do that today. I think that's really cool. And it's really, really like, it's really fun because the kids feel like, they feel like little chemists. Like, we felt like chemists while we were up there mixing up stuff and stirring up stuff. And you know, I this is when I found out if you wanted to clear your your sense of smell, sniff some coffee beans. I didn't know that. You know, because I was like, man, everything started to smell the same. By the time you sniff this fragrance and this fragrance and mix it all together, everything starts to smell the same. So, you sniff coffee beans and it takes your sense away. It clears your smell up. I went to, and, 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 and so that's the first time I learned about it. About a month ago, I had to go buy my uncle some cologne. You know, he loves Dolce & Gabbana. So I had to go to Kohl's and pick him up some Dolce & Gabbana, right? And so I love perfume myself. So my husband and I are walking around the um the store smelling all these different perfumes. And they had coffee grinds like sitting so you can just smell them. So you can clear your, your clear up your sensory so you'll be able to smell the new, you know, the new, um, the new smells. All right. If you like crabs, cracking up Wednesday, cracking them up Wednesday, there's crabs and comedy. That's nice. I love crabs. I should go to that. So if you like crabs, you got crabs and comedy Wednesday. It's going to be at the ATL Comedy Theater tonight from 830 to 1030. So you get a half a pound of crab plates with sides, fixings, including uh, a comedy ticket with the hottest comedians on BET, HBO, Showtime at the Apollo. Great night of food and comedy all in one package. 1999. Now this says one says 19, one says 29. Just check it out. Don't take my word for it. Don't go there and say, "Hey, I heard that woman on Good Morning Gwinnett say it was 19.99. Now y'all telling me 29 dollars. You want to call it Atlanta Comedy Club Comedy Theater first before you go to make sure the price is right because you only got 20 dollars. You get there, you got to pay 30 dollars. It's not my fault. But anyway, if you're looking for some crab legs and some comedy tonight, check out the Atlanta Comedy Theater located at 4650 Jimmy Carter Boulevard and that's in Suite 114 B in Norcross. 8:30 to 10:30. Get your laugh on. Get your crabs on. I love crabs. So I'm probably going to have some crabs myself today. Not at the comedy club, but probably at home. Or I might just go out to dinner. Listen, 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 uh, uh, Guanishans. That's all I got for you, Guanishans and my fellow friends around the world. Because I know that this show is around the world because I see where you're listening from. I, I love that too. Um, thank you for listening. You could have done anything this morning, but you decided to spend some time here talking, listening to me talk for an hour. And I really, I really appreciate that. 
Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing the show with others. Be sure to share the show more. You can, if you missed an episode of the show, go to goodmorninggwinnett.com to listen to past episodes. If you got a shout out for a birthday or anniversary that you want me to do, you can send me that shout out to Audrey at Good Morning Gwinnett. Audrey at Good Morning Gwinnett and tell me who I'm shouting out to. It is if it's a birthday or if it's an anniversary and I would love to shout them out. I'll be back again tomorrow at 11 a.m. God willing. Um, before I go. I want to give you a little, leave you with a little bit of inspiration because I like to do that. And so my inspiration for the day is so you can, so you can still have a great day once you get off the show. Cause I know right now you're feeling really inspired because you know, you listen to the show, but you know, got to finish off the rest of the day. It's just 10 o'clock. So your inspiration for the day is happiness is a buffet with no line. Go right up and enjoy. So let me just say that again. Happiness is a buffet with no line. Go right up and enjoy. Listen, enjoy as much as you can. Don't sweat the small stuff because it's all small stuff. Don't let anyone or anything uh, make you have a bad day. Don't let anything or anyone take your joy away. So I'll be back again tomorrow at 11 a.m., God willing. Until next time, everybody, make it a great day. Bye, y'all. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in daily at 9 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you miss an episode, go to www.goodmorninggwinnett.com to catch up. If you like this episode, go ahead and subscribe to the show now and share it with your friends.